Hi, I'm Captain Harold from the MIT Army ROTC program. And this is part one of a three-part series on the 18-minute drill designed to help platoon leaders plan from receiving the mission all the way through reaching out. So the first video here is going to focus on uh, the awkward notes card and how to fill that out properly. The second video will focus on uh, what the planning timeline looks like from receipt of the mission up until your operative brief. And the third video is an example operative brief that you could give as a platoon. So I have the awkward notes card over my right shoulder, and then over my left shoulder, I have a, a map of the area of operations that we're going to be conducting a platoon in the mission. So when you look at the awkward notes card, the first section that you see is the task organization. This is an opportunity for you to identify all of the elements that are going to participate in the mission. And then when you're giving a, uh, a war note to your platoon, a good, a good technique is to just identify what the individual responsibilities are going to be throughout the mission. So in this case, we've identified who the assault elements are going to be, who the support and who the uh, security elements are going to be in this mission. And that really gives your, your subordinate leaders an understanding of the, the who, the what, the where, the when, and the why of what it is that they're about to do. The next section of the notes card is the, your terrain analysis. So focus on OACOC. You can take most of this information directly from the company order, but understand that the company commander has written it about the entire company AO, and you need to tailor some of it to your specific platoon AO, really understanding what your route is going to look like uh, so that you can brief terrain accordingly. Also, when you're looking at the weather, you just want to highlight a few of the more important things. So specifically, uh, you know, what's the temperature going to be, and also, uh, you know, when is sunrise, when is sunset? Is this mission going to happen during creates good visibility or limited visibility at night? The next section is on the enemy information. So this is where you can take most of this information directly from the uh, company op order or the frago, but again, you want to tailor it to your platoon. So if the company order says that there are three, three to five man teams operating within the company AO, you should probably only expect to see one or two of those operating within your platoon AO. Also, highlight the most likely and dangerous courses of action, uh, which are likely going to come directly from that company or right. The next section is about friendly information. So it's key to understand some of the other friendly units on the battlefield. You know, where are your adjacent units? What are their task and purpose? Uh, so that as you're conducting route planning, you're not going to stumble onto uh, an objective from one of your sister businesses. Scrolling down here, we're taking a look at uh, more friendly information. So this is a look at uh, the company mission, which is one level up. For the sake of an expedient brief like this, we're not going to focus two levels up. We're just focus on the company right now, what their mission is, what the commander's intent is, and, and what his end state is. Uh, and you can copy that directly from the order or the frag. And then finally, you get to your mission, which is exactly what you want to execute for this operation. So you take that directly from paragraph three in the task and subordinate unit section, and you copy it verbatim uh, and place it into this section. Once you know your mission, you can then start to get an idea of what the, the timeline looks like. So we've broken this down into a planning timeline as well as an operational timeline uh, of what the entire mission looks like. So for planning, that's everything from your troop leading procedures, how are you going to uh, manage your time up until the operative brief is stepping off on your mission. And then for the operation, that's looking at you know, when do you expect to reach the, uh, the ORP? When do you expect to reach the control or the, uh, the objective? When does the mission need to be completed? And then next, you'll get into the specific tasks to subordinate units that you want to give to each of your squad members. So this is taking actual tactical tasks and then adding a purpose behind each of those tasks so that everyone has common understanding of what it is that they're doing. You can identify a main effort of your platoon. So in this case, take, for example, first squad. The purpose behind first squad's actions to assault is to disrupt enemy activity at AO Panther. And that ties directly into the task and purpose of the platoon. Also, you want to look at uh, some things at the bottom here, priorities of work, priorities of PCCs, and then your priorities of rehearsals. The first two usually don't change from mission to mission, but you really want to focus on what the priorities that you have as a leader for the rehearsals of your subordinates. So in this case, we've identified uh, a couple of rehearsals that we want to be specific to preparing for a platoon ambush. If your mission was to do a platoon recon, you might have a different idea of some of the rehearsals that we need to execute. Next, you want to look at some of the other coordinating instructions. You know, what's the order of movement going to look like from point A to point B? Uh, what's the actual grid location of the ORP or the objective? Uh, maybe some of the key points of friction during the mission are who's going to go on this leader's recon? Who's going to be involved in that? And what are the roles while on the recon? You might also want to identify some uh, additional tasks. 
including Aiden Winter Teams, EPW, and even a demo team if it's pertinent to the mission. The next step is looking at your scheme of maneuver. Uh, so you really want to take this opportunity to look at the map, understand the AO. This is where you apply your terrain analysis uh, using Olicon. Maybe sit down with the, that lead squad leader uh, as they are planning that route uh, so that you have a good understanding of what it is, uh, what the terrain looks like, and how you can execute the mission. So what is the distance and direction between each of, the, each of these points? So for example, you're going to start at Patrol Base Alpha, move to the ORP, then to the objective, and finally, end your mission at patrol base Echo. Once you know the distance and direction between those, uh, those locations, maybe identifying some major terrain features. So specific to this mission, there's an open danger area in between the ORB and the objective. That's something we need to be aware of and prepared for. What are that, that's going to influence what formations we use or uh, what techniques we use uh, to travel in between locations. So once you've identified uh, what the route looks like, and another point with that is that giving that responsibility down to the, uh, to the lead squad leader is a great way of empowering that leader to then take charge of that part of the operation. You can take weight off of your shoulders for running that. Um, and they're ultimately going to be the one who's in the front leading the entire patrol. So it's a great opportunity to get them on board and to get everyone on the same page. Now looking at phase three, you want to look at your actions on the objective. So bring everyone together, draw a quick sketch of what you think the objective is going to look like. And as you're planning this part of the operation, a couple things you want to, want to remember uh, for any operation. The first thing you want to do is gain and maintain contact with the enemy. Once you've done that, you want to disrupt whatever activity it is that they're doing. Fix them in place so that you can then send a maneuver element uh, to maneuver on the enemy and follow through with whatever your mission is. Whatever that means destroy, neutralize, et cetera. So looking here at this picture, this is a good way for people to understand spatially, maybe during a war note for you to do some quick planning with your subordinate leaders. What, what element is going to be where on the battlefield? Um, and then also it's a great picture for you to then hand to whatever soldier you're going to have build the terrain on the field. Things to consider as you're uh, going through your actions on the objective are what is the trigger for executing this mission? So in this case, it's an ambush. How are you going to trigger that also, what are, what are the branch plans? No, no plan is going to survive first contact with the enemy. So you need to be prepared that if the enemy does this, maybe your response to that is going to do this, so that you're ready to react to that accordingly. And then finally, what are your sequel or your follow-on plans? So once you actually, for this particular mission, once you've made it to Patrol Base Echo, uh, how are you going to be postured for follow-on operations? And specifically, you want to use this opportunity to make sure that all of your squad leaders understand, and then after they've had a chance to work with their, uh, with their own platoons and, and do it, or with their own squads, do a little bit of a uh, map rehearsal and recon, they come back and they back brief you this plan before you give the actual order uh, so that you can make sure everyone's on the same page. The next section, finishing up with paragraph three, you want to talk about your, your coordinating instructions. You can take this directly from uh, the company order or the, the frag up. So PIR, FFIR, uh, looking at both friendly and enemy forces. Um, and then finally, and also paragraph four, your sustainment. Some of this will stay the same from Frago to Frago, uh, but key things that you always need to address is what is your resupply plan? Typically, you'll be resupplied at an ORP with you know, your class one and your class five. Uh, and then what is your casualty plan? So you need to have a location of a CCP, but remember, it's not just actions on the objective that you need to plan for. You also need to be prepared to take a casualty on your way to the objective or even from the objective to your final patrol. And then the last paragraph, command and signal, it's, it's really key to understand the location of your other friendly units on the battlefield in the event that you need an help. So a good example of that, what is the location of the company command post? And then also, who's in charge? What's the succession of command? Uh, in this case, we've identified the PL followed by the platoon sergeant, followed by the most senior squad. Also, uh, make sure that your subordinates have that same plan in place at their level. So if the weapon squad leader were to go down, who is the next team leader who's going to take his place? And finally, uh, for signal, our tendency is to brief through this part really quickly uh, because uh, it, it sounds the same every time. But this can become critically important when it comes time to actually split your elements. So imagine that you have finished the leader's recon and you're now coming back to the ORP and you're trying to link up with the rest of your team. It's critical that people understand what that challenge and password is, maybe what that number combination is in case you're using IR flashes tonight so that you can avoid fracture stuff. 
And then finally, the pace plan, understanding or making sure that everyone in the platoon understands that if the primary method of communication goes out, we have at least these two to three other methods of communicating before all else fixes. So that finishes the upwards note card or the upward notes card. Uh, and the next video will walk you through how to plan the mission from receiving the mission all the way through the top.